You know, the beauty of this is that this entire discussion of belief in divine decree and knowing that the pen already wrote, not when the heavens and the earth started, but 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth, the creation even started. What it does is it establishes the trust that the believer has in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawakkul ala Allah, to completely rely and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust that what he wrote was written for, for, for our good as well and that everything happens for wisdom and that you know sometimes we can't figure it out but at the same time we are comforted and we are content we are content knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what he's doing you know a lot of times we try to play God and we try to say well if this would have happened or did that really have to happen for this to happen or why didn't this happen or why am I even here or why did Allah decide to do this well first of all you know Let's first establish the basis that there's a creator and that there's meaning. And then you don't decide to do or you don't decide what the creator decides at that point. You know, you have to submit your own logic and you also have to submit your own idea of what should and shouldn't happen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said that when a person establishes their belief in, in Qadr, in the divine decree, they really establish their tawheed, they establish their belief in Allah. And when they have deficiencies in their belief in Qadr, in their belief in divine decree, then they also have a deficiency in Tawheed. It shows they don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they doubt some of the abilities and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer is really at ease. You know, he's at ease with the writing, knowing that everything that happens in this life only happens by the will of Allah. And there's a very beautiful uh, hadith uh, or, or the context of a hadith that we've actually already mentioned. Uh, Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, the great companion, he, uh, he says to his son Al-Walid at the time of his death, he's giving him his last words, his will. And he says to him, Ya Bunayya, O oh my dear son, innaka lan tajida ta'ma haqiqat al-iman. You will not taste the sweetness of the reality of faith. Hatta ta'lama anna ma asabaka lam yakun liyukhti'ak until you come to this conclusion, this satisfaction this knowledge that, that everything that has struck you was not meant to have missed you. And that which missed you was not meant to have come to you. And then he quoted the hadith of the Prophet and know that the Messenger of Allah said that the first thing Allah created or of the first things that Allah created was the pen. And that was 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth and so on and so forth. So he's telling his son, you will not taste the sweetness of the reality of Iman, the reality of faith, until you understand this, that the pen has already written. And when you come to that comfort, then you'll be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. Now subhanAllah, there, what, what he's mentioning here, he's not saying that you won't be a believer if you're not pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to be a believer, in order to be a mu'min, you have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed and you know you have to you have to have no doubt whatsoever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed in accordance with his knowledge and that everything happens for a reason and so on and so forth but there's a difference between that knowledge and actually appreciating it and actually coming to terms with it and actually saying alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me what was better for me though i know though, though i might have thought that something else was better for me it's, you know, it's the difference between uh, a person who eats through a feeding tube, who's got a tube up their nose and they're barely, you know, they're surviving through that food coming up and actually tasting good food, which is known as al-ridha bil qada, to be pleased and satisfied with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where you're not only, you not only have this peace uh, or you not only have this knowledge that you know what, it happened for a reason, alhamdulillah. And sometimes our alhamdulillah is, you know, where we're saying all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almost like a qualifier for our complaints. Like we'll complain about the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, but alhamdulillah, right? So we've, you know, in essence, we've done everything that contradicts this so-called gratitude. But then we just throw in that statement to sound religious, right? There's a difference between that and actually saying, alhamdulillah, I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what I don't. Wa'asa an takrahu shay, and you might hate something and it's better for you. So that's where you taste the sweetness of faith and you're able to come to terms with your faith when you know the storm hits you, you're able to weather that storm. And this gives you much more. You know, the very famous hadith of Ibn Abbas عنه, where Ibn Abbas عنه, says that the Prophet ﷺ was riding in front of me and then he stopped and, and he started to give me advice. He turned around and he started to give me advice. And he said, Oh young man, let me give you some words of advice. Ihfadillah, be mindful of Allah. 
يحفظك. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve you. احفظ الله. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. And he said, وَإِنْ سَأَلْتَ And if you ask, ask of Allah. And if you seek help, seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Know that if, the, if everyone was to gather together to benefit you with something, لَمْ يَنْفَعُكَ بِشَيْءٍ They will not be able to benefit you with anything إِلَّا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it for you. So it doesn't matter what connections you have and who can do what for you. They can't do it for you unless Allah wrote it for you. And if, the, what, and if they all came together to harm you with something, لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ They would not be able to harm you with anything except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it for you. رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامِ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفِ The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. In essence, what, it, what this does it, it, is it empowers you. So number one, you know, this, this gives you peace of mind that everything happens for a reason, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow anything to happen without purpose. Right? Number two, you don't kill yourself over if I would have done this, then this might have happened. And if I would have done that, or if this would have happened, then this would have happened. Right? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, don't say the word lo, if. Because it opens the doors of shaitan. You know, it also causes us not to fear people, but to only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, a lot of times we get overly paranoid about things. So for example, you know, when something bad happens to us, the first question is, who put the evil eye on me? The evil eye exists, and who envied me? And that, that exists as well, and who tried to harm me, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, Allah is more powerful than the evil eye. Which is why all of the du'as about the evil eye are really putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is more powerful than people trying to harm you, and their plots against you. So you, you, seek, you seek that protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they can't harm you without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. Even shaitan, the Prophet said, don't curse the shaitan. Because when you curse the shaitan, yakbur, he becomes greater. Hatta yasiru kal bayt, until he becomes like a, as big as a home. Why? Because you've given him more power than he actually has. He says, instead, say, Bismillah. Say, in the name of Allah. And when you do that, shaitan becomes smaller than a fly. Because you're in essence saying that Allah is more powerful than the shaitan. So it gives you complete tawakkul complete trust, and if you are able to master this rida, master this pleasure, then your affair in this world is amazing. Because the Prophet says, Ajaban li amrul mu'min, how amazing is the affair of the believer. When good comes to him, then he praises Allah, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's better for him. And when hardship comes to him, he's patient, and he still thanks Allah and seeks the reward, and that's better for him.